Let's take a look at graphing on T84 plus C Silver Edition. Okay, let's look at our first one. Y is equal to X. And I guess I better clear my tablet here. Now these are fairly simple graphs, so you may already know what these look like. And that's not the point. Uh, the point is to learn the basic building blocks so we can combine these together later on to graph very complex graphs. Okay, so y is equal to x. Uh, go uh, y equals. I press clear, clear wherever's on the line, and then I'll put in my x. Now the x I'm referring to is this x t theta little m between alpha and stat, and then I press graph. And um, then our graph looks like this. Okay, let's say you got an error of some sort. If I go back to y equals, see across the top says plot 1, plot 2, and plot 3. Those shouldn't be highlighted. Uh, the items I'm showing you will fix probably 95 to 98 percent of the problems you run across with graphing. And at some point you will have a problem. So if I up arrow and put my flashing cursor on plot 1, if I press enter one time, and then down arrow, you now see plot 1's highlighted. If you have any of those highlighted, one of three things will happen. Let's press the graph here and see which one happens here. We get an error uh, in valid dim. And um, this kind of gives you an idea uh, where the error is. If I just press enter on quit. If I go back to y equals, you can freely go back and forth between y equals and graph. I come here and I see I got it highlighted. So I'm going to up arrow, put my flashing cursor on plot 1, and press enter. Then if I down arrow, you see the highlighting's all gone. I can press graph, and it'll work. That's one thing that will happen. You get an error like that. Other thing is it'll just work. Uh, third thing is um, it'll work, but you'll have extra boxes on your screen. So you'll get weird results. But you, can't, you don't want any of those highlighted. Now if I go to y equals here, you see we got y1 through y9. If I scroll down, there's a y0 here. Occasionally students will come down here and they'll put a bunch of garbage in there. A bunch of commas, parentheses, or something like that. I don't know. Then they go to graph. It gives them a syntax error. And um, natural inclination is quit is highlighted, so you just press enter and quit. You think that's weird. Go back to y equals. You're looking at it, it's like, well, it don't get any easier than that. So you think, well, maybe it's a quirk. And you try again. So you press graph. And it's working this time. So you, you think, okay, well, it's, it's, everything's fine. It comes up with a syntax error again. What you should always choose is you should always choose go to. So I'll down arrow to go to and press enter. And it'll go to where your error is. Now, whenever I run across this, I, I ask the students uh, if they have children. And... Um, uh, every once in a while, a student tell me no, they don't have any children, and I, I, I'll tell them to quit drinking while they're using their calculator. I can't figure out any other way that they put garbage down there. And then I had one student one semester. She says she throws her uh, calculator under her backpack without putting the cover on, and so then I could understand how you can get garbage down here without having an alcohol problem. Anyway, once you get down there, you press clear, it'll clean it up. Now, if I press graph, then I see it's working. Okay. The other thing that oftentimes happens is your zooming gets screwed up in some manner. Um, so if I press zoom, I can choose 6 for Z standard, and that'll fix it back to my standard viewing window, which is from negative 10 to 10 on the X and negative 10 to 10 on the Y axis. As an example of uh, how that happens, is every once in a while people go to window, and they'll put in some bogus data here. They'll put in like 20 for X min, and X max is still 10. Then if they press graph, it gives them a error window range. And down here it tries to give you some clues, but anyway, I'll press enter and quit. Zoom 6 will fix it. Um, those three items I've covered will fix, uh, like I say, 95-98% of your problems. Okay, let's look at the next basic building block of graphing. we got y is equal to x squared. So press Y equals, press clear, I do my X key, and then I'll push the X squared, and then graph. 
And that's our answer. Now the next one we'll take a look at is y is equal to x to the third. Now I don't really care what this graph looks like. I'm demonstrating how do you plug in when you have any number in your exponent. x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, uh, x to the twentieth. Well, come to y equals, clear, press my x key, and I'll do caret. Now this caret is between the divide and the clear. When I do that, it throws it up into an exponent mode. And then I'll put 3 in. Now you have to be careful if you have anything else in this problem that you press your right arrow key to get out of exponent mode. Very important uh, that you, you do that. This T84 um, plus C silver edition is different than other T84. So if you have an instructor that's showing um, where they just do a caret 3 and they don't have to do anything else, you remember you have to do the right arrow key to get out of exponent mode. And then press graph. And that'll give us our answer. Now this one. Y is equal to x to the one half. I'm showing how do you handle it when you got any fraction in your exponent. It's more than that. If you ever have more than a single number or a single variable, um, then then you have to do this. Now I'm going to put it here, but we're going to see we're going we don't have to do it on this particular calculator. Your general guideline is more than a single number or single variable. Put parentheses around your exponent. It doesn't hurt on your calculator but you don't need it. I show it here because if you uh, have it shown in class and they got the older T84 model, uh, they'll be put in parentheses. And you may be wondering why. Anyway, I'll press Y equals. I'll press clear to clear whatever's not line. Do my X key, caret, and again, it's already up in the exponent. So now I just do 1 divided by 2. And to get it out of the exponent mode, you press your right arrow key. So again, I did not have to put the parentheses around the one half, and then graph. But as always, remember the right arrow key to get out of your exponent. And this would be your answer. Well, let's look at y is equal to square root of x. I press my y equals, press my clear. Now, not everything's on a button. Some items are above a button. You see above the x squared is a square root symbol. So to get to that, I'm going to press my second and then x squared. And you see the square root symbol and has a little blank there for the radical. And I'll put the x in. Uh, I'm still in the square root. So to get out of the square root, I'm going to press my right arrow key. Uh, very important, because um, if I had anything else after that that wasn't underneath the square root, then I'd have to press my right arrow key. And then graph. I know you'll get tired of hearing me say right arrow key, but <laughs> that's kind of the key behind it. And we get the same graph, which they should be. X to the one half is the same as the square root of X. Cube root of X is one you run across fairly often in math also. Well, I'm pressing my Y equals, press my clear. Now, if you don't see your item on a button or above a button, for graphing purposes, it'll be underneath the math button. So I'll press the math. And the cube root is the fourth one down there. You see it's got a 3 and then a radical symbol and a beginning parentheses. So we'll press 4 to choose it. Or you can down arrow to it and press enter on it. Anyway, I'll press 4. And it puts a cube, cube root symbol there and a blank uh, underneath the radical. So I'll put an X in there. And to get it out of the cube root, we're going to press our right arrow key. And then graph. Kind of slow. There it goes. So then, that'll be our graph. Well, let's take a look at how to do the fourth root. I could care less what this graph looks like. I'm demonstrating how do you handle it when you got a number in that slot. That slot's called the index. And you could have uh, 4 or greater. Uh, we already covered a square root and cube root. So you got 4, 5, 20, 201. Uh, you can have any number in there. How we handle that is we press our y equals, clear. We'll put our index in first. So I'll put the 4 in. Then I'll go to math. And I want to choose the fifth one, which is the uh, one with the x as the index. 
So press 5. Now it automatically puts the 4 inside where it should go. And I'm inside the radical now, so I'll put an X. And then I'll press my right arrow key to get out of the, uh, the radical. And then press graph. And it kind of looks like the square root, but it's closer down to the, the x-axis. Not that close, but <laughs> let's try it again. It's, it's just sketching, but it should be a little bit closer than that. Uh, let's, let's say that. Okay. Let's look at our eighth one. y is equal to the absolute value of x. Press my y equals, press my clear. If it's on, on a button, it's not above a button. For graphing purposes, it's underneath the math button. So we'll go to math. It's not under our first menu. So if I right arrow over, you see uh, ABS is our first one here. So I'll press enter on it. And it puts our absolute value bars. So we'll put X in there. And again, again, to get out of the absolute value, I press my right arrow key. And then I press graph. And that gives us our, our graph. Now our next one is y is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now I could care less what this graph looks like. I'm demonstrating uh, how do you handle a fraction on your calculator. And this is uh, true of uh, most calculators. Typically, um, if you have more than a single number or a single variable on top or bottom, you have to put parentheses around that part. So put parentheses around top, parentheses around the bottom. If I just had a single x up on top, I wouldn't have to put parentheses around it. It wouldn't hurt, but you wouldn't have to do it. Other than that, I enter it as I see it. So I press my y equals, press clear, do a beginning parentheses, x plus 2, closing parentheses, divided by, beginning parentheses, x minus 3, Closing parentheses and then graph. And uh, kind of sketch this. I won't make it too precise because I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on it. And something like that. Now, if your instructor is showing a, an older T84 in class, there'll, there'll be a vertical line here. That vertical line should not be there. It's a flaw with a calculator. I went out to TI's website and read about that. This is what it should actually look like. Now, the next one we're going to take a look at is y is equal to dash square root dash x uh, dash 3. Okay. We got uh, two dashes on our calculator. One on the bottom here, that's a negative. And then one on the side is a minus. The guideline is, is if your dash is at the very beginning of whatever, it's a negative. So this one here, since it's the very beginning of our problem, this is a negative. This dash here is the very beginning of our square root, so it's a negative. This dash here is between the x and the 3, so that's a minus. Now, you might say this dash here is between the square root and the x, but uh, that goes against if it's a first item in whatever, then it's a negative. And uh, that's how we'll type, plug it in. Now, some calculators don't care uh, about these dashes. You can interchange these. And I, to be honest, I don't know if this one uh, cares or not, but we'll see. So press y equals, press clear. Put in my negative since it's the beginning. Square root, so second x squared. Then I'll put a negative since it's the beginning of our, in, at the start of our square root, x minus 3. Now I'll press my right arrow key to get it out of the, the square root. And then press graph. And so our graph looks like this. Okay, well let's do some playing. I'll press y equals. And, um,. This negative right here, I'm going to instead change it to a minus, and then press graph. You notice we get a syntax error. Well, let's choose go to. Remember I said you should always choose go to, so I down arrow to go to, and press enter on it. It not only goes to the line where there's a problem, it puts a flashing cursor on the problem. So you can see, well, I put the wrong dash, so I'll put a uh, negative there. Well, if it tells you if you put the wrong dash, why even spend this much time on it? 
Well, let's go to this minus here and we'll change it to a negative. And then we'll press graph. No longer do we get an error, we just get the wrong graph. And that's kind of frustrating. You know, come test time, final exam time, you miss uh, every point, and um, you think you did it perfect, and it looks like you did it perfect. Well, if I go back to y equals, change that to a minus, then we get the graph we're supposed to. Um, this is why it's important to know what dash is what. Now, our last one we'll look at is a um, combination of different uh, building blocks. So we've got y is equal to x squared to minus 3x plus square root of x. Not that you need it for this calculator, but remember typically um, if you got more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent, you have to put parentheses around it. So we have to put parentheses around the exponent like that. Now it doesn't hurt to actually do that in your calculator, but you don't need to. So I come over here, I press my Y equals, press my clear, I do my X key, caret for the exponent, and now I'm up in exponent mode, so I don't need those parentheses, they don't hurt anything, but I'll do X squared minus 3X plus square root of X. So I'm going to do second X squared for the square root, I'll put the X in there, I press my right arrow key to get out of the square root, and I press my right arrow key again to get out of the exponent. And then I'll push graph. <clears throat> and it looks something, well, eh, it's not very good. Try again. Uh, something like that. Um, as close as I'm going to get. Is this a true picture? Uh, no, there's probably more to it. Uh, we don't worry about that. Uh, you can get the true picture if you go on and take calculus of some sort, Calc 1 or Business Calc. Uh, there's a whole chapter on how do you find a true picture of the graph. Now let's say you, um, last course you took, you were uh, uh, big on plotting points. You love plotting points. You're not into the technology. You'd rather plot points and get the picture. Say you were um best point plotter there was. Everybody else was happy with three points. You had to do ten. Well, we know what this graph looks like. This is the parabola, the U-shaped graph. Or is it? Maybe it looks like this. You just didn't plot enough points to see the picture of the graph. Maybe it comes up like this and comes back down over here. Maybe this comes up like that and comes back down over here. Maybe it comes down over at x equals 500. So you just needed to plot 500 points and you would have uh, seen it come back down. Plotting points is the worst way in the world unless you know what it looks like to begin with. The graphing calculator is a uh, um, step forward on that. It still isn't perfect. Um, to, to get the true picture again, you have to go on the calculus. Because realize that our standard viewing window on our calculator may look like this. And you don't see it coming back down. Now the leading coefficient test will help us with that later on to see whether our graphing calculator is giving us a uh, accurate representation, but still it's imperfect. It uh, won't always help you find out the true picture. Now in your calculator, again to get out of anything you do second mode, dex it out, and you're back to where you can just enter in numbers. And that's graphing on T84 plus C Silver Edition.